all in all, a good quarter, well within our, our guidance. We also provided some uh, update on on uh, an update on the where we are at with the Seguela construction. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcady Economics, and excited as this morning we have some news out from Fortuna Silver. They reported their first quarter production numbers and. Fortunately, to join me to go through what they came back with is Jorge Ganoza, the CEO of Fortuna Silver, also joined by Dave Pranzler of Investment Research Dynamics, who will be chiming in in our Q&A. So great to have you both here. And Jorge, I know you're at the Zurich Investment Conference today, so thanks for making some time. And uh, perhaps you could just give us an overview of the production numbers and how things were looking in the first quarter this year. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Dave? Well, we put out uh, our production numbers for Q1 this morning, as you mentioned, uh, 94,000 ounces of gold equivalents produced in, in, in the first quarter. That's uh, 60,000 ounces of gold and about uh, 1.6 million ounces of silver. Uh, all in all, a good quarter, well within our, our guidance. We also provided some uh, update on... on uh, an update on the where we are at with the Seguela construction. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, uh, we're well advanced with the project and, and in a position to say that we are expecting to produce gold, first gold at Seguela in, in next month, in May. Yeah. Well, it's certainly exciting as you're getting a bit closer and uh, I know it's a project you've been working on for quite some time and made a lot of progress. Uh, possible that we could take a quick look through the various mines here and look at the production numbers. Um, slightly coming in, a decrease due to head grade at a few of the mines, but uh, largely in line with guidance and perhaps you could just give us a brief overview of each mine. Yes. Uh, overall, when we compared against Q1 of last year, or, or gold production is uh, slightly down 10%, and, and for silver around 5%. So uh, the drivers for for that, uh, but all in all, according to our guidance and and uh, and our reserves and our mine schedules, right? So at the Lindero mine, we had a you know, we're transitioning to one of the lower grade uh, zones compared to a year ago, well within our plan. Uh, so the same is the case at the San Jose mine in, in Mexico. So, uh, you know, but largely within what we have guided, uh, uh, very much in line with our reserves uh, and mine schedule. So, you know, I think it was a good quarter, 94,000 ounces of, of gold equivalents. At a time like this, you know, when we're seeing some higher prices. Uh, uh, as a reminder, we have guided for 2023 uh, around 440, 450,000 ounces of gold equivalents. But uh, Seguela starts producing now in the month of May, June. So into the second half of the year, we'll see the bump coming out, coming from the 60 to 75,000 ounces that we uh, expect to produce uh, in 2023. But more important, at an all-in sustaining cost of 880 to uh, $1,080 per ounce all-in sustaining. Right? So very good margins in, in this new mine. Well, I know it's going to be exciting and we, we'll be seeing you there in Seguela in just a couple of months. And Looking forward to seeing it, and that will certainly be adding to the production on the gold side. Uh, Dave, did you have any questions on the numbers that came out this morning? I did. I was just wondering um, if you could kind of go over, it looks like gold production was down a little bit year over year for the quarter. And I was just wondering if you could um, address that. Yeah. You know, we had uh, we seen lower gold at uh, basically two of, of the mines, one uh, Lindero and the other one San Jose. Uh, but again, the 
lower production compared to a year ago is explained at both mines largely by uh, you know the reserve grades and where we are transitioning and mining through the the reserves so there has been no deviation with respect to or or schedules and, and mine plans and guidance for 2023 no uh, as you know when we look at reserves we're looking at the average grades and that average is made up of you know some zones with higher grades some zones with lower grades and as the mine transitions through the life of the reserves we can be mining higher grades or lower grades in this case we're transitioning some through some of these lower grade zones at the mines but again that was within our plan so it is uh also, the deviations with respect to a year ago are 5 10%. You know, in, in mining, we work with reserve, not reserve calculations, reserve estimates. Estimates, yeah. And thus, uh, the, the, what the estimate word allows for is fluctuations. In this case, uh, you know, we are hitting what we expected to find, right? And uh, a deviation of 5% or 10% with respect to a year ago uh, is is really well within you know what we feel comfortable with. No, you you always want to be at or above, but in this case, we're just transitioning through the reserves, and that's fine. Sure, yeah, I I like to explain it to people that you know mining is not a it's not a precise industry like producing computer chips, and that production is lumpy and there's all kinds of things that can come out of left field that might disrupt the production for a quarter. Yeah. Um, in, in, I noticed, in, oh, go ahead. No, in this particular case, we had no events that have impacted a uh, production in the quarter. It's just that we are transitioning through some lower grade zones in the reserve that we expected. It's right. in our prime plans, right? So it was very uneventful as a quarter in terms of, of production. And, uh, you know, we delivered uh, a substantial 94,000 ounces of gold, which for a company of our size is, is a sizable amount of, of gold equivalents. About 20% of that, if we look at revenue composition, 20, 22% is, is silver, you know, one and a half million ounces. Uh, almost 1.6 and, and 60,000 ounces of gold. So uh, we also uh, produced some 13 million pounds of, of zinc and nine and a half million pounds of lead. So uh, that's a nice byproduct to have. And uh, it was, a, all in all, a, a very good quarter. Oh, I, I, I agree. I, I noticed, um, I did see reference to the sequencing issue at, at Lindero. Does that mean, do you, and I know you won't know until you get to the next zone or zone, but do you think that the grade of the ore that'll be produced as you're done sequencing through the current area, the current part of the reserve, is, do you think that'll go back up or stay about the same? You know, we, a good, a good uh, guide to, to that is the ore that we placed on the leach pad. Right, because of the leaching sequence, the oral we put. So we have placed 0.7 gram material on the leach pad in Q1. Right, so that's the gold that we're going to harvest in Q2, basically. Right, because uh, of uh, the fact that the Lindero mine is a heap leach operation uh, right. and the leach cycle is 20 to. to, to, to between 20 days and, and, and three months of leaching, what we place today in the in the pad is what we're gonna harvest in in, in, in three months, right? So uh, that's how it works. So, you know, we met uh, uh, our expectations uh, with respect to our place on the leach pad. And, and that's also in the news release, no? That, that's, some, that's information we provide for the benefit of, of, of the investors and analysts, the amount of ore and grade that we have placed on the leach pad. Sure. Um, 
it's also worth pointing out, I think, I mean, Lindero is no Segala, but the, the average grade that you're heap leaching is, is still higher than an average Nevada Carlin mine. Yes, yes. Uh, we are placing on the leach pad 0.7 gram material. That's what we're doing. And, and uh, it's particularly at these prices, this is, uh, you know, very good, very good grades, right? Uh, so that mine is tracking along our plans or expectations. So I, I guess the, the overall message is uh, there have been no disruptive events whatsoever across the business and uh, all our minds tracked along with the with its plans, which sounds might might be sounds a bit boring, but boring is fine with me. <laughs> Well, I think that's always good when, in, uh, especially in mining, when things are going as planned and uh, yeah. a positive step, even if uh, yeah. not yeah. headline grabbing, but a good thing yeah. for investors. Um, Jorge, obviously, uh, as we mentioned, you are getting quite close at Seguela. I have some pictures of the construction there and just anything that you'd like to share as things are getting very close to the first gold core here. Yes, I think it's, it's a, a good time to reflect on the journey uh, because this journey started in April of 2021. We closed the acquisition of Rocks with, when we announced the acquisition and we closed the acquisition of Rocks Gold in July of 2021. So it's going to be almost two years now of hard work and a lot of uh, capital invested and, uh, on, on, on getting to where we are today. Uh, and we are about to start harvesting, right? So it's been two years of, uh, uh, you know, doing, executing on the acquisition, integrating the business and uh, allocating significant capital to the development of this new and exciting mine. And, and we are about to start harvesting all of those basically two years of hard work and a lot of capital allocated. So it's exciting times. This is going to be a flagship asset for the company. And as I said, you know, meaningful production at low cost with long life of reserves. So those are the, the, the tick marks that we need to see. Uh, for an asset that can provide strong, robust uh, returns on capital. And that's what we look for. Here. Well, it seems like everything has gone extremely well. Obviously, a big project, and you guys have stayed on time and on budget throughout that, which uh, really well done, and congratulations to you on that. So uh, I'm sure it must be a good feeling to be just a month away, and we'll be looking forward to hearing and seeing more about that. So. Dave, did you have any, or, or go ahead, Ori? No, I was just going to say that the team, or West African team, has done an excellent delivery. I mean, we're, we're still in the final mile. We're running that final mile uh, to, to first goal. Uh, but I have to say that and commend uh, or, 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 or West African team for an excellent delivery, right? An excellent delivery. This building a mine is a complex endeavor, and, and, and you know, all the people that are involved to make one of these things successful, uh, it's incredible. From the guys who made the discovery hall to the, the team that's gonna put it into production and do the operational readiness and eventually run it. Uh, it's, you know, uh, hundreds of, of, of people uh, involved and they all done a great job. So I'm very, very uh, satisfied with that and, and thankful. Okay. Well, it's impressively done and quite a large project. And I'm personally looking forward to seeing it in person and uh, we'll be there in a few months. So Dave, any final thoughts today before we wrap up? Well, I have two. I just had one quick question on Segala. Um, have do you have any idea at this point how long the commissioning period will be? We are, uh, I would say, two thirds done with commissioning. So I was at Segala three weeks ago, and uh, I was able to observe uh, commissioning of uh, conveyor belts during my visit. Uh, the crushing system 
uh, was commissioned uh, the first days of April. And we're going to start with wet commissioning in the coming days. Uh, so commissioning is, I'll say, two thirds of the way done. The, what's coming now is a uh, ramp up, right? Uh, uh, we'll get it into production and, and getting that ramp up. So, so uh, the, the question is how quickly are we going to be able to ramp up to nameplate, no? And uh, the ramp up is an outcome of how well you built and how well you commissioned. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be the ultimate test to the quality of the work that we've been doing over the last, uh, uh, you know, months of construction, right? So uh, my expectation is that based on what, how we've been uh, advancing methodically and, 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 and where we are today is that I expect it will be a swift uh, process, no? And our expectations and, and, uh, on, on ramp up are in our guidance, right? We already provided guidance for the gold we expect to produce in 2023 at Seguela and at the cost at which we expect to produce. So I believe that by year end, we can revisit the guidance and what we really delivered. And that will be the ultimate test for me and the team on, on how well we did with the ramp up. But Dave, right now, I don't see anything derailing. Uh, the, the boys there, the team have been hitting their dates uh, and, and, and swiftly, methodically. Uh, and and uh, I can say that, you know, there is no better time to bring a mine into production like right now, right? When with all of this expectation of higher prices and gold hitting record highs and and uh, some renewed interest on 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 gold and and uh, it's an exciting time. There's no better time to bring a mine into production. I think with a bit of luck we'll look very smart with this one. <laughs> oh I I mean I'm a broken record when I say this, but I mean, if you hit the high end of your guidance this year, so to say 460K gold equivalent ounces, and you're at nameplate on Segala in 2024, you're going to be producing north of 500,000 ounces of gold equivalent, assuming the other four mines just flatline. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> Segala, with the grade that you're going to have and with the price of gold where it is, it's going to be wildly profitable. But I mean, a, a mining company that's producing half a million ounces of gold equivalent should have a market cap that's probably about double of what your current market cap is. Yes, yes. And and uh, I believe that uh, that will come, but uh, as we just have to continue doing the work, we deliver on time on budget, and then show in the first quarter of production those margins, right? And that free cash because that's the ultimate expectation from everybody. We need to see the free cash coming in. This is a mine with a long life of reserves, tremendous exploration potential. So if we can show the free cash and then sit and say, okay, these guys have a decade of mining at the very least ahead yeah. of them, uh, with that kind of cash flow generation, I think we're gonna be good and, and you know, we know that sometimes the market can get disconnected from the fundamentals, but eventually they will converge. So we just have to keep focused on delivering and doing what we said we would. You know? and, and, and that's where management focus is. Well, it's certainly all coming together uh, quite at the right time, as you mentioned, and gold uh, back over $2,000 an ounce, which will should that stay there certainly be a, a nice bonus uh, at the same time that you're bringing the mine online so appreciate everything that you're doing there and thank you for making some time to join us from the conference today i know it's been a busy day there but always it's good to see you and talk about the latest progress at fortuna so thank you jorge Ganoza of fortuna silver as well as dave kranzler from investment research dynamics and appreciate everyone who is watching at home and thanks for tuning in and we will see you again soon